Welcome to Train Signal. You're watching a lesson on motherboards. So what is a motherboard exactly? Well, I have one displayed for you, or an example of one displayed for you on the screen right now. But before we get into talking about the different intricacies here of the, this, this craziness that you see on the screen, uh, let's just kind of talk generically about what it is. A motherboard is a electronic circuit board okay and we'll talk a little bit more about the circuits in, in a little bit uh, but it's this board that kind of brings all the other components that make up this thing we called a computer it, it brings them all together okay so uh, some people consider a motherboard to be the heart of the computer okay because all of the data all the everything flows through a motherboard okay as as things travel from one component to another everything must go through the motherboard so many people think about it uh, just the same way as uh, again as a human you know we have all sorts of different parts to our body but all of those parts need the blood to to flow you know through all the different circuitry of our body and the heart is where everything flows through Okay, so that's why some people consider the motherboard to be the heart of the computer. But whether you think of it that way or whether you just generically say, hey, it's just this circuit board and there's things on it, it doesn't matter. What's important is that you understand that a motherboard does exist inside of every computer and that there are certain necessary components that will attach to the motherboard or connect to the motherboard and, and when I say attach versus connect some things are physically you know on the motherboard so it's attached and other things have a connection via a cable okay so we'll say that's the difference there so real quick what I want to do is uh, I want to go through all the different items that I have pointed out for you here on this screen now I will tell you this is not everything Okay, as you can see, there are many other different circuits and capacitors and, and all kinds of stuff that are also going on here on this motherboard. These are just some of the more popular, the more commonly known components. And I will tell you that some of the things that I'm pointing out to you here that exist on the motherboard, we are also going to talk about in more detail uh, either later on in this lesson or in some cases, and matter of fact, in most cases, a lesson of their own okay so if we just kind of start at the just the top left here uh, you'll see that I have three letters CPU okay with a red arrow pointing to what looks like a fan right isn't that what it looks like it looks like we have a fan that the CPU is pointing at well that would be correct if, if that's what you're thinking if you're thinking wait a minute CPU that that's a fan there is a fan there but under the fan you see all those kind of grayish silver little panels there well that is something called a heat sink okay so that's not the CPU either and uh, we'll learn about this in a separate lesson when we talk about CPUs uh, but basically the heat sink and the fan are used to help keep the CPU cool because the CPU works very hard and because it's working so hard it gets very hot and so it needs to be kept cool so you can't actually see the CPU but it's underneath that fan and that heat sink okay so underneath there uh, it's a flat chip and again we'll learn about this in a separate lesson you'll see all about it is the CPU which stands for central processing unit or some people just call it a processor now one other thing I want to mention before we go on to any other of the components here is this term CPU all right because some people will look at the computer that's sitting on your desk or under your desk or wherever it may be right that that box right that that metal and plastic box and they'll say well that's the CPU yeah you know that's become somewhat of a common term they'll point to that box and say that's the CPU versus you know the pointing at the monitor or the keyboard or the mouse you know the things that are on the outside that you can see but technically, CPU stands for Central Processing Unit, and that's the processor, which people will more commonly refer to it as. That is the, uh, if we're going to say that the motherboard is the heart, we'll say the processor is the brains of the computer. Okay? It's where all the brain activity happens. So anyway, enough about that, because we have another lesson where we will talk about that in more detail. If I just move kind of clockwise around the screen here, uh, we next have power. 
Okay, and you'll see that I'm pointing to a connector, right? It's a, a black connector with a bunch of holes in it. Well, that is where something called the power supply, which is something that will get a lesson of its own, uh, the power supply, which provides power to the computer, okay, so we'll say to the motherboard in this case, uh, it can provide power to the motherboard by connecting into that spot right there. Moving along, we then have disk interfaces, and again, Disks and storage is a lesson of its own. And in that particular lesson, you will see that those connectors right there that we're pointing to, those are SATA connectors, S-A-T-A. -A. Okay, so that's the type of hard drive or the type of hard disk that would plug into this particular motherboard. Then another item we have here are the memory slots. Okay, so uh, they're partially hidden there by the processor fan, uh, but those long, skinny black slots with little clips on the end, that's where your RAM, your random access memory will go. And uh, again, it's becoming a common theme. Uh, there's a whole separate lesson just on RAM. The next item we have is the CMOS battery, C-M-O-S battery. Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor. That's what CMOS stands for. This little battery is what keeps just enough power always going to the motherboard, even when the computer's turned off, right? You can turn off the computer and the power supply has turned off, and so therefore the motherboard's not getting power from that. This is what keeps things like the system clock still up to date. Okay, and if we go back to the old days, and I say the old days because these days the system clock typically gets refreshed once the computer is on, uh, especially in a corporate environment. Uh, it will connect to a, uh, a time server within your corporate network, which will bring the clock up to date if it has fallen behind or, or maybe ran a little bit ahead. But in the old days, when you just had computers that stood all by themselves, you'd notice that the clock at some point would start falling behind. That was a really good sign that your CMOS battery was getting low, right? Because it's a battery and batteries do eventually run out of energy and they have to be replaced. And as you can see there, in this particular situation with this motherboard, you can see how it, it looks like an oversized watch battery and it can just be popped right out and you can put a new one in. In the older days, we did have motherboards that were like this, and then we also had motherboards where this particular battery was soldered onto the motherboard. And then it became much trickier to replace that battery. Now the reason that they soldered it on is because they figured that the life of this battery was probably going to be about as long as the expected life of the computer as a whole, and that you'd probably be replacing the computer by the time the battery ran out. But they realized that that was not the case. Computers were lasting longer than expected, and the batteries maybe were lasting shorter than expected. So that's what the CMOS battery looks like. Kind of surrounding the CMOS battery there, we have expansion slots. Now expansion slots is something we'll talk about in more detail later on in this lesson. Okay, But this is where we can expand the motherboard to allow the connection of additional components. And then finally, the last item we have here, and we can get moving along into some of the specifics on the motherboards themselves are the external ports. And there's a lot of them, okay? I mean, the angle here, it's kind of hard to see all of them, but I can see uh, an old-fashioned PS2 keyboard and mouse connection all the way in the far corner. I see a couple of USB connections. I see a video connect. As a matter of fact, I see a couple of video connections. I see both a VGA as well as a DVI connection. Um, I can see networking connections uh, where we have an Ethernet. And it looks like below the Ethernet connection, there's some more USB connections. Uh, it looks like uh, next to it as well. So it looks like this motherboard might have, and again, the angle is a little funny here, but it looks like it might have six USB connections. Uh, I could be wrong. It could be that some of these might be FireWire. Some of these could be something called eSATA for external SATA. Okay, it's, it's hard to say just looking at the angle of the picture here. And uh, finally, I also see then some, uh, some sound connections for like speakers and, and stuff like that. Now, don't worry if you're thinking to yourself, what the heck was all that you just went through, right? You just mentioned keyboard, mouse, USB, video. 
These are all things that we're going to cover in detail in this lesson or in other lessons. So don't worry, we'll get to see things at a better angle than this.